All right, welcome back, everyone. I'm just gonna start the REPL here. But today we're gonna do some database stuff. And before we can do any database stuff, we actually need a database. So I'm gonna use Docker for this, and I'm gonna write a Docker Compose file. Version three, boop, boop. So in our Docker Compose file, um, we're gonna use version three of the YAML syntax, but we're gonna manage services, and the only one we are actually going to make is a DB, so for database. The image is gonna be using Postgres, and it's always a good idea to make a container name, clj auth db, and then we're gonna expose 5432, which is the default port for Postgres servers. And lastly, we're gonna also add in environment variables. Now, user and password is gonna be the authentication that we need to use to log into this specific Postgres server. And Postgres and Postgres is the usual go-to for that. But the important one here is Postgres DB. And this is the actual database inside of the container that we're gonna use. And it's gonna be CLJ auth. Now we just need to call Docker Compose and create that container. And I'm using dash D so we can have it in the background. Now with that out of the way, we basically have a Postgres database that we can log into. And to log into it, we can use docker exec. Dash IT means interactive, the container's name, and then also the, the command psql to actually use the Postgres CLI. Dash U Postgres is just the username that we have to give it. And now we can connect to the CLJ auth database. And right now it should be an empty database. So if we just do a DT to see all the possible tables, we don't have any relations. And this is a good starting point of what we're going to do today. So let's open up our project and we're going to make a new file here called db.clj. And that's what we're going to go into. So always make sure that you have your namespace of auth db. And now we're going to set up the configuration for the database. To do that, we will need to import JDBC, which I have. So the first thing that we need is a map, which is our database configuration. All right, so this is basically a mirror of what we have as our environment variables that we put into Docker. The database name is gonna be corresponding to the name of the database inside of the container that we created. That's why it's not underscore DB here. The DB type is PostgreSQL, and then we are hitting the local host. We don't have to specify the port here because we're using the default port of 5432, but dbconfig here in of itself doesn't really do anything. So if we evaluate this, we evaluate the value inside of dbconfig, we just get the map back. What we actually need to do is put the connection inside of its own def. And we can do that with a method on JDBC called get data source, where we just pass in the dbconfig here. So now if we evaluate, db we actually get the object reference of the database back now that reference to db is important because we need it as the first argument to jbc execute so here and then after that we can supply a query string inside of a list of any valid sql so the first one that we're going to run is actually to create the table that we're going to use and if you're familiar with sql this is not something that's too out of the ordinary we it's just a table of users with ID, username, email, and password, all as text. So we evaluate this, we get this strange list coming back that basically says that it's been executed. And to check, we can actually just log back into the database. And now we can do a DT to describe all the tables. And now we have the table of users, which we created inside of our REPL, so from the editor. So let's try a different query and let's do Go ahead and insert some users. So let's do a user with user, user at mail.com and password as the values and try evaluating this. And you can see it's worked and the update count is one. Now there is one problem with this and it's that the return value is not in a format that we can actually use. Luckily there's an optional, was this third argument that we could put here where we could say return keys to true and we can also provide a builder function. Now the builder function takes in the return type from JDBC and it turns it into something that we want. Uh, we could write our own, but next.jdbc has a helper library for us. So we can do results set and I'll alias this as rs and we just pass in rs slash as unqualified maps. 
an unqualified meaning that it's not going to do any transformations to our data. It'll just come back as is, almost as is. Um, it will be closurized, but you know. Now I don't want to use this, so I'm going to change this just to do a select star from users, so we just get everything. All right, I had to do some refresh inside the REPL, but, but now you can see that we have our user coming back, and this is just all of the users. So with this, we have a way to execute SQL queries. Now, the thing that I want to try out is the library of HoneySQL. So I will get rid of this here so that we can try out some HoneySQL stuff. So with HoneySQL, we can use the format function and execute a query based on the map, the closure map that we give it. So something like this. I think this has to be a list. So let's try that again. Yep. So what this gives us back is a JPC compatible query string. And right now, this isn't very impressive until you start trying to make more complicated queries. So let's try adding a where here. And we're gonna pass in the where to be equals of user. All right, I think that's right. Let me check. Yeah. So here you can see that the query is being broken up into two strings where the question mark is gonna be equal to the other thing. We can make this even more complicated as with other fields. Is this correct? Yeah. Okay, so here we can add the and, and I think I did it wrong. So the reason why I added honeysql.helpers is so that we could use, instead of a map, we could generate a map and compose it like this. Or alternatively, we could add it into a thread, like so, and we'll get the same result. That's just a quick overview of how honeysql works, and we're gonna put both of those things together into a helper function of our own. So here is a helper function called dbquery, and where we just have to give it the SQL, and that will be created by HoneySQL. That way we don't have to worry about passing in the database configuration itself, or this option map. We're also gonna need another one called dbquery1, and that's to update JBC execute to execute one, and the big difference here is that we're getting one thing back rather than a list of things back. All right, with those out of the way, now we can create our application-specific database queries. So here's the query that we created earlier with HoneySQL. This is to select everything from users. And then at the very bottom, inside of this thread first, we're passing it to dbquery. So you can imagine if we run this, we're gonna get everything back. And you'll also see that this is actually being run by JDBC. Now the reason why I have it in a let block is because we're going to create another value here called sanitize user, and that's just to get rid of all the passwords coming back from the database. So let me rerun it again so that you can see. So it's returning password, and we don't want to return that to the user, whoever. So we'll do that here, and we do that using a map. So we're mapping over all the users that come back. And this is a shorthand for an anonymous function, where inside the anonymous function, we're going to call it the soak, which is going to look at the property. Percent here is the argument that's fed in. And the property is password. So we're just gonna get rid of all the passwords and finally return to this function, the sanitize user. So let's try that out. So in a comment block on the bottom, get all users and run this. And you'll see that the return here is a list of all the users, but it's missing the password, which is the intended effect. Now we can go ahead and create a function for getting a specific user. And the assumption here is that it's gonna get the argument of a whole user and we'll destructure it so we have just the username and password and of course we're going to use a let block so that we can run a query for just one user and this is where we have another thread first form and this time we're going to only going to query one because we're expecting one thing to come back and i know i'm not doing an equals a password and that's because we need another thing to happen um I'll go over that in a little bit. We still want to sanitize user, but because we're dealing with one user this time, we don't have to map over it. We can just use dsoak on the returned user. And here, let's return the sanitize user before I go into the next step, which is we're going to grab another dependency. This time, it's going to be buddy.hashers. And this is so that we can encrypt the password and also check against the password. So for that, we could actually go ahead and create our next function, which is the 
create user. So following the same pattern, we're getting username and password, but this time we have email and we're going to create another let block here. The first thing that we want to do is hash the password. So we're going to hash the password and that's the result of encrypting the input password. Then inside of a thread, we're doing an insert into this time instead of a select. And here we're selecting the specific columns of email, username, and password because that's what we're sending in. And then with the values, we could pass in uh, order matters here. So let's make sure that email comes first. Username, and then for the password, we're sending in ha the hash password. We'll use Honey SQL to format that and then make sure that we do a query. And once again, we can do the sanitize user that we've been doing earlier to take out the password. And now we'll return that created user. Oops. That sanitized created user. There we go. So now that the created user is has an encrypted password, we actually need to update our get user here to actually check against the password. So the attempted password, I mean. And we can do that inside of an if block. So remember, check comes from buddy. And this password is the password that's given into get user. And then this password is the actual password inside of the database. Uh, it's also a good idea to make sure that the user exists. So I'm just going to put this inside of an and. And let's go back down to the comment block. Now the user that we added into the database earlier is now invalid because it doesn't have an encrypted password. So we'll have to create a new user with email user at email.com username of username and password of password. So let's run this create user that comes back and we can also do a get user. Grab this and put it here. And now we're getting the same user back, which is good. Uh, get all user should also do the same thing. We have two in the database, as you can see here. Uh, luckily, I made sure that these usernames are different. That was kind of an accident, to be honest. And if you do want to check the password, we could run this query here. So the encryption is using bcrypt and SHA-512. SHA and then there's this long hash, but these functions now work. And now I can get rid of this comment because we no longer need it. So the last thing we need to do is just add these two handlers so that our route could use it. So in the auth handlers, let's go ahead and add those. So first we need to import auth.db and I'll get it as db. All right, so I know there's a lot that just happened, um, but it's very simple what's happening. We're really not doing anything special. We just return JSON of whatever the result is from the database. So get all users, we'll call get all users. Register, we'll call create user. And login, we'll call get user. The only difference for here in terms of logic is that added inside of a let block. And that's because body is, or I mean parameters is in the format of this. So we actually want to get the user from the body of the parameter. So we need to destructure it this way. But after we do, we can just set it in as data. And that's the same thing in login. And then finally, in login, we're also doing a simple if here. So if no user is returned, that just means that we need to send an error saying invalid credentials. And I know 404 might not be the right status code, but it's good enough for what we're doing. Now that we have these handlers, let's go back into, let's actually make sure that we save this and then go into routes and update the handlers here. So users is gonna be get all users. Um, this is no longer dummy handler. This is handle login. And this is handle register. I guess we can also get rid of this dummy handler since that's no longer needed. Our application is basically done without the actual authentication part. We're doing the creation and also the get. So let's go ahead and check those in Insomnia. Oh wait, I, I, need, to, I need to run this app first, so let's do that. Okay. So here, let's um 
let's use some different names. So instead of username, we're doing Kelvin and Kelvin dot or Kelvin at mail dot com and then password is password as always. So we do a send. We get the user back and ID of three, which makes sense because this is the third user we created. But now if we change this register to a login, remember that we have to get rid of the email so that coercion doesn't have to take place. And we send this, we get a 200 OK, and we also get the same user back. Now if we do a gets at all the users, I did something wrong, didn't I? Oh, right. Uh, make sure that you're actually accepting the correct amount of arguments. Get all users needs that single request argument. So let's stop the server, refresh everything, restart the server, and finally do this get request to slash users. And there's all of our users. So we did the API functionality in this video and in the next video, we're actually going to guard some routes so that we can do actual authentication and hopefully maybe authorization. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.